Today will be on tips to improve your public speaking skills. This virtual event is organized by the French American Chamber of Commerce New England chapter in collaboration with Cara Lund, CEO of Speech Revolution, and with the support of the National Network of the French American Chamber of Commerce. To learn more about our series of webinars, please visit our local website at facni.org or our national website. Before we start, some housekeeping items. This webinar will be recorded and the replay will be available on FACNI's YouTube channel. The presentation by Cara will be 30 minutes long, followed by Q&A. Every participant is on mute by default. If you have questions, please use the chat window and address them to FACNI. Ludivine will invite you to ask them directly to our speaker during the Q&A. Finally, if there is a technical glitch, please reconnect with the link we shared with you this morning. Today, we are delighted to welcome Cara Lund. Cara is a long-term time member of the French American Chamber of Commerce. She is the founder of Speech Revolution and an international voice, speech and presentation skills coach working between Boston and Paris. She helps clients gain a stronger, more competitive edge in their professional fields and bring their storytelling to a whole new level. Cara, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ludvine, and welcome everyone. You know, I started getting to know Ludovine and the wonderful people at the French American Chamber in Boston in the fall of 2014. I had the idea that I wanted to be connected to Europe in some way, shape or form, and especially France. And so I thought, well, I'm just gonna start business there, even though I didn't know a soul. So I started showing up at networking events at the French American Chamber in Boston and literally following people around the cheese table in this desperate attempt to try and build a network very quickly so that I could get meetings on the calendar for my upcoming trip to Paris. And they were so very nice to support me in that effort. And I uh, have been very grateful because I've been going back and forth between Boston and Paris to work with clients and eat far too much Queen Yaman and Chocolat Show ever since. And I really miss it. And can't wait to get back. You know, if the work that I do really focuses around five main areas. I help people manage their nervousness, which is often the road to personal presence. I work with people to adopt positive body language skills so that they show up and sound and look like leaders and so that they can more easily motivate and influence people to follow them. I am a voice teacher and singer by trade. I have a lot of stage experience and have taught college level voice and performing arts classes for about 14 years. So my work as a voice coach is there to help clients make sure that their voice matches the message that they want to send. I also help people, my niche is working with non-native English speakers. So I work with people who might have a heavy accent to ensure that their accent isn't a detraction from their message, but works for them instead of against them. And finally, I work with people to organize their content, especially subject matter experts who have a tendency to get lost in their content. And I help them to find the anchors, anchor pieces and the messages so that they can stay on track and keep within time. But I know that the French don't have any trouble with, uh, with that. So you can just ignore that part when we get to it. We are sensory beings that are craving connection. And if we weren't distracted before, now that we are disconnected, it becomes even more difficult to keep listeners' attention, to create meaningful connections, and to feel good about it. So for the next 45 minutes, I want to introduce you to a few tools that you can use to look, sound, and feel more confident, even if you aren't, to continue to build trust and create those meaningful connections so that you can be more successful online, whether you're seen online or not. But before we get started, I would like to invite you to type into the chat what challenges that you have either as a participant or as a facilitator in this whole online world. 
what aggravates you, what do you struggle with, what questions do you have? And if you could just type into the chat, I'd love to see what's on your mind. Usually nervous, stress, yes. Lost confidence around an accent, sure. Nervousness and keeping the content, I know. Mm -hmm. I get headaches sometimes too. Keep every focused when running a virtual meeting, yes. Mm -hmm. All of those things. And if you're feeling them, most everybody else is too. These are very, very human elements. Any kind of change brings with it a whole new level of anxiety. And because almost nine out of 10 people don't want to be seen online, how are we supposed to really create those connections? So, <laughs> And then we lose the important aspects of what we would normally get in nonverbal cues if we were together. So it becomes even more challenging to feel connected, build relationships, which we know that business is built on. So I want to give you a breathing technique and a breathing exercise that you can do to help you find your focus and turn anxious into eager or anxious into energetic. And if you are of the mindset that any tool is going to bring you to perfect happiness, complete joy, and total perfection, then you are constantly setting yourself up for disappointment. So the goal is not to eliminate nerves or eliminate anything. The goal is to manage nerves and you measure you against yourself and not against anyone else. So, our goal is also to try and find our way back to neutral. And when we can reset the system and go back to neutral, we're more able to find what's next in front of us and create happiness and find happiness along the way. So we're not just flipping off a switch, we're constantly finding a way back to neutral. So this breathing exercise I'm going to talk to you through is called box breathing or tactical breathing. It's used by Navy SEALs. And it's very easy to remember, which is why I'm giving it to you. There's lots of different breathing exercises that I take clients through depending upon their challenges, but this one is easy. And it's built around four basic principles or themes. You breathe in for four counts, you hold for four counts, you breathe out for four counts, you hold for four counts, and you keep this going for about five minutes or for about as long as you can until you can bring your focus back into place, find your center, bring your blood pressure back down, calm your nervous system, and then you have more to bring and offer to the conversation. And you're also inviting other people in to be relaxed as well, if you're not showing up with nervous energy. Again, there's nothing perfect, but whatever we can do to bring ourselves back to our center is a good thing. It's going to be an, a value add to whatever we do next. So to begin with, I want you to see if you can sit up tall. We want to align our ears over our shoulders, over our hips. And if you would be willing to turn on your video, I would appreciate that. I'm gonna, not going to make anybody do that. But if I can see you, then I can more easily guide you through the exercise. And if you're not comfortable with it, that's fine too. But as we're aligned, then bend forward just a little bit at the hips so that your lower belly muscles can have room to breathe. You don't wanna be leaning back in the chair because then you won't be able to breathe all the way around the back. And we wanna be able to breathe all the way around the back and sides. We start by softening the belly. When you can soften the belly muscles and the hips and the pelvis, you allow the diaphragm to drop and you allow the breath and the lungs to fill at the bottom and the ribs to move outward. 
And that's a deep breath. That's the one we want. That's the one that takes us out of the, the head and puts us into the body. It gets us out of the primitive brain and puts us in a place where we can reset, hit that reset button. So start by finding soft belly muscles. Just relax them, feel the diaphragm drop and try to feel the ribs go out to the sides. So we wanna go out to the sides first before we feel the front to back. And notice if you are filling the top of the lungs first. If you're filling the top of the lungs and feeling your shoulders go up, see if you can get that to move down. So what we feel begins under the ribs. In the soft belly. And when you exhale, you're gonna move your lower belly towards your back and in and up. So if you put one hand on your chest and the other hand on your lower belly with your thumb on your navel, we wanna feel that hand that's on the belly move before this ever moves outward, but never up. And as we begin, I'm just gonna count a really slow count of four and try to feel that uh, deep breath all the way around the back. And as we breathe in through the nose, two, three, and hold, two, three, four, and exhale. And hold, two, three, four. Breathe in again, in through the nose. And hold, two, three, four. Exhale, soften the neck. And hold, two, three, four. Breathe in again. And hold, two, three, four. And keep going like this as I talk you through it. Every time you breathe in, soften the jaw, soften the tongue, soften the throat. And every time you exhale, soften the back of the neck and lengthen the spine up towards the ceiling, send the air up towards the ceiling hitting the ceiling just in behind you as it follows the natural curve of your spine. Every time you breathe in, breathe in a little bit deeper, a little bit wider through the ends of the toes. And exhaling, feel your feet on the floor as you extend upwards, softening the back of the neck, lengthening the spine, and just following the movement of your breath. Every time your thoughts wander, bring it back to the movement in your belly and around your back. Make it deeper, wider, more greedy. And a full body experience as much as you can. And whatever emerges, see if you can allow it to pass through. If it's anxiety, if it's stress, if it's pain, Whatever we resist persists. So sit with it until it dissolves and accept and honor it. Try not to push it away. And after you get your body set and you feel like you're settling into your breath, it's often a good idea to replace any kind of negative thoughts with something that's positive, something that you really need for the day like a strong I am statement. It could be, I am ready, I am capable, I am prepared, I am enough, I am loved, it goes a long way. But something that you can take into your body through the ends of your toes and send out. And just by finding, finding a few minutes to do this, this has a tendency to help us to find neutral. And we're never done. We're constantly finding our way back to neutral so we can be more present, so we can be more responsive rather than reactive and deal with what is exactly or directly in front of us rather than getting caught up in all the stressors that lie ahead. And let's bring it back. 
So just that simple act of breathing in for four, holding for four, breathing out for four, holding for four, and finding something that you can do before you enter a meeting or presentation to reset your energy will leave you better off than you would otherwise. And then you have more to give to your listeners. If you are like me, you find that the most difficult part of any presentation is getting started and finding, finding your organization along the way. I am someone that is not a talker. So when I can find and anchor my statements, both my opening, but also my transition statements, that's a lifeline for me. It's a lifeline for people who are not talkers and are super introverts, but it's also a lifeline for people who are talkers and have a tendency to go off in all kinds of directions and get off track. So it's always a good idea to be as prepared as possible, but sometimes we don't have a lot of time to be prepared. So finding a formula that allows us to put things in place and give us, us anchors and lifelines of information and key messages is always helpful. And it's going to help us to feel a little bit more confident moving forward. So if you can, I would love for you to find a pencil and a piece of paper, or if you want to type on your screen, that's fine if you want to share it. But I'm going to walk you through a little formula that I use with clients who have trouble staying on track and they lose their listeners in the meantime when they get off track. And we're basically answering the questions of what, how, why. So after I introduced myself, I think I said, it's very challenging keeping people's attention, creating meaningful connections online and having and enjoying doing it or something like that. So you were laying out the problem first. So I want you to write down what your what is. What are the circumstances in which you're dealing with? What is the problem or the challenge that you're trying to solve? What is your what? And see if you can describe it in maybe two or three or four key statements. And just take a moment to do that. And once again, because this is participatory, I would love for you to turn on your video because when I see that your head is up, I'll know that we can move on to the next part. But I'll also be able to walk you through some of the ex other exercises. So if you would be willing to turn on your video, I will feel less alone. After you have written out your what and you've described the challenge, what are we gonna be talking about? Now you have your how piece. So after I laid out the problem, I said, so for the next 45 minutes, I'm gonna walk you through a few tools that you can use to look, feel, and sound more confident. So this is basically your agenda. And maybe it's, so for the next 45 minutes, we're gonna hear from three experts who are going to uh, update us on new trends, after which we will discuss and lay out action plans. That's your how. How are we going to be addressing this in our meeting or presentation? And once you lay that out, then it's why. Why do we care? What does it matter to us? so that you can continue to build trust, look, sound, and feel more confident online, create those meaningful connections, maintain your listener's interest, and be more successful overall. So when we answer what, how, and why, we can then string it together so that it becomes a really strong anchoring statement to not only start the presentations, but also create transitions into different sections. And just that little bit of organization can help us stay on track and stay on time. And since in the past, we had the opportunity between meetings to get up and move to another part of the building for another meeting, we had that little bit of movement. But now that everybody is in the same place, it's always good to end a meeting beforehand because it is exhausting to be online all day long. 
and we need that extra movement. So when you can be more organized and more succinct in your messaging, everybody will appreciate it. So once you have your what, how, why, I want you to put, aside, put it aside for just a moment. And we're gonna come back to that a little bit later. So now we're going to ask ourselves, as we try to get listeners to pay more attention, and we want to keep creating more meaningful connections, and we know that people don't want to be seen online, we can ask ourselves, how can we close this gap of disconnect? And I think that's really our job, to close this gap of disconnection and try to create as much normalcy as humanly possible as we can. So the first thing I want you to ask yourself or, or see about is how can we create a meeting in which we see each other the way we normally would in person? And that might start with making sure that our camera is at eye level. So if you are not at eye level, I want you to look around your space and see if you can find books, boxes, anything that you have to lift and elevate your laptop so that we see you straight on. And when doing this, this not only creates a sense of normalcy because I see you the way I would if we were meeting in person, but it also suggests a relationship of equals. If I'm not looking up at this looming figure that's looking down at me, I feel like I'm four years old looking up at dad. But it also is much more flattering because as beautiful, if not stunning, I think your nose is, I like it better straight on rather than looking up at it. And the other thing that it does is it allows us to, or it actually asks us to sit up. And when we are sitting up, we are keeping energy in our body. So when we start getting tired all day long, the first thing we want to look at is how is the physical energy? Uh, what am I doing and how can I keep energy in my body? And when I can show up with more energized body language, even online, what that's saying to you is I am present. I am fully committed to this message, to this meeting. I'm fully committed to you. And I want you to know that. And even as a participant, we have this responsibility to kind of show up and show that we're invested in what's going on. This helps us break through this two-dimensional flat barrier that we have to elevate the conversation as a whole. And as a participant, I just want you to know that video has a tendency to flatten everything. It'll flatten our expressions and it will flatten our voices and body language. So if we're sitting back, way back, with our hands folded. If we were in person, we would probably be able to see through the really subtle nonverbal cues that that person is fully attentive, they're really thinking about this, but because video flattens everything, it can sometimes look like they're disinterested or they really don't care or they're annoyed. So if there are two things that we need to do on video, it's bring a little bit more into our face and expression as well as our melody, melody in the voice so that that flatness doesn't start to turn in another direction. So now that everybody is a little bit further up and um, I can see you online, uh, or at least straight on, I want you to see if you can develop a relationship with your camera. So when we are seen online, eye focus is still important, just like body language is. The problem with this, though, is that if I'm looking at you and making eye contact with you, I'm not looking at you. And when I'm looking at you, it doesn't seem to you that I'm looking at you. So this can get really confusing, but it does make a much stronger impression if you can get used to looking at the camera, especially if you have something important that you want to resonate. You can deliver it straight to the camera because you know that there is a living, breathing human being on the, the other end of that little black circle that is paying attention and wants to know what you have to say. And you want them to hear what you have to say and they're going to hear it louder and clearer and it will resonate better with eye contact the same way it would in person. So let's develop a relationship with our camera. I want you to think about anything that you want to talk about. And since everybody's microphones are, are off, it doesn't matter. But 
find your camera and practice talking straight into your camera and I'm going to time you for 45 seconds. If you find that your, your attention is wandering off of the camera, just bring it back. And like I said, we have to start getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. I didn't say that yet, but I'm saying it now. We have to get comfortable with the uncomfortable and just stay with your camera until you can start to relax into talking to that little black circle. Okay, and ready, go. Okay, I lost count, but anyway, how was that? Was that painful? Not too painful? Yes, it was painful. <laughs> I'm sorry. It really does take some getting used to like any, like everything else. But once you start getting used to it and realizing that your important statements and your real connection to someone, as odd as it seems, is going to be straight through that little black dot. And they're gonna feel it the way they would feel eye contact in person. So just, figuring out where you can use that when it makes sense will make a big difference. I do believe that when I can see someone talking to me, if there's a, a webinar or a presentation, it makes a big difference. If I don't see someone and I only see slides, it is too, it's too easy for me to walk away and just listen and then start getting involved in something else. But the very idea that there is somebody, even if they're in a little square, that's talking to me and looking at me, even if I know they're not looking at me, it's harder for me to look away. <laughs> so I have a tendency to pay more attention when I see the speaker. I'm willing to, and they're willing to show themselves to me. So consider that. And if you are willing to show up online on video, you're also giving other people confidence and in the invitation to show up too. And without that, it's really difficult to maintain these connections or make further connections. So, bravi, everyone. So, after we close the gap visually, we have organized ourselves verbally and we have set our energy so that we are in a calmer place and we have more to bring to this conversation. The next piece is. Whether you're seen or unseen, there is an added emphasis on voice skills. There's an extra attention on voice skills and how we use our voice. And just as I said a moment ago, if we, there's two things that we need in online presentations and on online in general, it's more expression, both as a participant to support the facilitator, and that's just not just for me, but as a speaker, as well as more melody and more that we bring to the voice to break this 2D flat space and bring more life to the entire experience for everyone. In acting, there are two basic method methods. There's inside out and there's outside in. In inside out, it suggests that by clarifying your intention, by finding your purpose and your motivation, that will impact your behaviors in the way you uh, show up and move and sound. And outside in suggests that when you manipulate or change behaviors, that will trigger your internal motivations and your intentions. So if we go back to our what, how, why, it's very important as we work from inside out first, it's very important to clarify what you wanna get out of this meeting or this presentation. Do you want to make the sale and get $10,000 at the end of the hour? Do you want to motivate people to, uh, to rally around a new project? Do you want to uh, just simply share information which other people will take and make decisions on? Clarify your intention and by clarifying your intention, that will inform how you sound and what you do or how you manage the course of your presentation. 
So do we want to motivate? Do we want to just inform? Do we want to guide people to trusting us? And do we want to, I mean, do we want to build trust simply by uh, being, being present and letting them make a decision for themselves? Do we want to teach? Do we want to inspire? What do we want to do? Clarify your intention. Outside in, you could think of it as fake it till you make it. When Anthony Robbins says, when you're feeling a little bit depressed or sad, simply go to the mirror, smile at yourself in the mirror, and the very act of, of moving the muscles will trigger different chemicals in the brain and you'll start to feel happier after a few minutes. Or Amy Cuddy, when she says, use your power pose, stand in a very strong physical position, and the, physical, the physicality will change chemicals in the brain and you will start to feel more confident and do that. So I want to play with a little bit of outside in first. And I'm gonna read something to you. And I want you to type into the chat box, whatever impressions you have, how it makes you feel, whatever comes to mind, you have full authority as long as it's clean and legal. Okay? I think I need my glasses for this. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends, that in spite of the difficulties and frustrations of the moment, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. Behold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Yes. <laughs> so how did that make you feel? Did it give you energy? Did it take it away? Would you want to continue listening? It is MLK, of course. It's an excerpt from uh, Martin Luther King's speech. Funny. Yeah, exactly. You need to, to want to hear emotion in it. The words are inspirational, a bit monochord or monotone, yes. Not enthusiastic enough in the delivery. You read it with very little emotion, a bit too fast. Yeah, so now question, did it give you energy or did it take it, take it away? Voice doesn't match the original speech, not at all. A bit too fast, yes. I'm gonna read it again. And then I want you to give me some more impressions, okay? I'm gonna change one thing, one little manipulative tool based on outside in. And then tell me the same thing right into the chat box. Let us not wallow in the valley of despair. I say to you today, my friends, that in spite of the difficulties and frustrations of the moment, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. What do you think? How did it make you feel? Would you want to hear more? How is it different? Well, 
more engaged, much more powerful, slowing down and emphasizing the most important words gave it more meaning, emotion, I have goosebumps, oh, that's nice. You are looking down for too long. Well, I have to read it. <laughs> Slower, I didn't memorize that. You emphasize certain words which gave the piece a profound meaning. Yes, okay, good, so I'll tell you what I did. <clears throat> And that might not have been the best choice if I were memorizing this for a play or something like that, or memorizing it to, to truly deliver it. The first, in the first reading, what I did was I intentionally compressed the melody. And by compressing the melody, it made it go faster and it flattened it. It flattened everything. You couldn't tell the end of one phrase to the beginning of the next. And then it didn't let any of the important adjectives, nouns, or verbs stand out. So you lost the entire meaning and intention of the message. The second time, all I did was focus on injecting energy into the consonants. That's it. And by injecting a little bit of energy into the consonants, it automatically created a little me more melody. It gave me more of a sense of meaning because there's more energy used in the consonant, it made me pause. And when you pause, you allow your listeners time to absorb information and time to formulate questions. So that's a gift that you give them. But it also connected me to the words in a very different way where I could own them. And that was just on focusing on injecting energy into consonants. So this is a tool that you can use just an outside in little manipulative tool that you can use to really connect with your words, which is the, the whole point and purpose for you to own your words. And when you own your words through design and delivery, you will own the room. That doesn't mean that you're gonna get your $10,000 and it doesn't mean that everyone's going to agree with you, but at least you will have their attention and you are injecting energy and giving them a gift. You are breaking this flat two-dimensional uh, space and creating more life in it. So now it is your turn. Manon, can you bring up the, the script? I want you to practice reading this excerpt and I want you to practice injecting energy into the consonants and seeing where that takes you. Seeing if it, it allows you to connect just a little bit more and have a deeper relationship with the content itself. And go ahead. How did that work? How did it feel? It seems like everybody's wrapped up. It might feel a little bit clunky. It might feel a little mechanical at first, but it's, it's something again that you have to settle into. It's like my running friends say that after about 20 minutes, they start to reach their stride. You start to relax into the material and it feels more comfortable and it feels more natural. So you say, well, I don't, give inspirational speeches at work. I talk about numbers and facts and all kinds of information like that, practical information. But you can actually use this in whatever it is that you're saying. Because the verbiage will change, because your message will change a little bit, it'll automatically settle into place. But by injecting energy into your words and consonants, you'll elevate the message in a completely different way and people will hear it differently. But it also, is the energy that keeps giving back, not just to you, but to your listeners. 
And again, this is closing the gap in our disconnect, or at least helping to do so. So let's go back to our original what, how, why, our opening statement that you wrote down at the beginning, or whatever it is that you want to say. We clarified our intention, but now I want you to see if you can use some of the same energy that you injected into the Martin Luther King excerpt and bring it into your what, how, why, or any way that you want to, um, anything that you want to talk about. Okay, and I'll give you just a minute to do that. Play around with it, let it be awkward, but see what comes out of it. And go ahead. Now, if, can, if it can lead you to expression, that's an added bonus. <laughs> it's something on your face, that's an added bonus. Okay, and bring it back. So was that painful? A little bit? Did you feel that it was good energy? Did it change something in you internally? Did on some level it, it feel good? And you can put it in the chat, whatever your impressions are. So what this does is injecting energy in just your words helps you develop a, a more of a relationship with your words and your content. It brings you to more melody. It brings you to a uh, different pacing in phrasing. And lo and behold, you're making music. And if you make music with me, oh, I'm going to love you for it. And what you're doing is you're inviting me to meet you on a different level which energizes both of us and elevates the entire conversation. That keeps us all going. And again, that's just little ways that we can break through this two-dimensional barrier and bring ourselves back into some normalcy in some real life. So at the outset, we worked with a breathing technique to manage our energy. We organized our content so that we could stay on target and keep our thoughts organized. We thought about how we're showing up and how we can create as normal a space as possible, like real life, to again, close that gap and disconnect. We thought about how we can be as participants to be more uh, supportive as colleagues. And we talked about how we can add more melody and more, mel and more energy to our words and how we present and how we share information, not just for ourselves, but to elevate the entire conversation and keep everybody going. And that is a true gift when you can do that. That is part of the outward mindset of how do I show up and what do people need from me? What do they expect from me? What do they want from me? And what do they need from me to keep this lively and to keep it going? So with that, I hope you got some things that you can use immediately. And I would, for a last exercise, before we open it up to questions, please do type into the chat, what chat box, what takeaway that you can use immediately, if anything. Exactly. You know, and injecting, spending time on consonants and energizing consonants will be particularly important for French speakers 
because what we really need are some of those final and medial consonants from French speakers when they're speaking English. So this will help you with your diction. Great, great. So it looks like you got some things that you can take away. And that was my whole point and purpose. So thank you, yay. <laughs> so we can turn, if you have to go, thank you so much for your attention. Stay well and stay in touch. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. And I recently wrote a three-part series about presenting online that you might find interesting and find on my LinkedIn page. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon. And we can open up the microphones and I would love to hear what's on your mind. Thank you so much, Kara. Uh, we have a question from, uh, from Valérie. Valérie, can you turn on your microphone, please? Yes, I think she answered my question. Okay. Hey, Kara, this is Rob. I'm the one here in the messy office with my wife. Um, Hi, Rob. That was, uh, that was fantastic. And I do a lot of public speaking, but my wife, Laura, who's here, does not. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, were you know, we were comparing notes on the whole thing. But even for those of us who do a lot of professional speaking, uh, what was great about what you presented, um, I think people should not underestimate the importance of the, of the what. It grounds us for a meeting. You know, what am I trying to achieve? And so often we're rushed and we don't think about it until we're there. So uh, I found that extremely, extremely powerful. And secondly, it's the camera. We all forget about the camera until somebody can create technology that we can look directly into our screen. Um, we, it feels very impersonal if we don't do it. So thank you for sharing that. I know, maybe that will be one of the innovations that comes out of this whole online experience. Someone will finally do that. <laughs> yeah, in fairness to my, uh, my colleagues at FACNI, uh, native French speakers, my French is uh, not as good as theirs by a mile, um, but they speak English beautifully. They do. Thank you. How about sound technology, Luisetta? Goodbye, Mark. Do you mean that you want me to talk about sound technology? If you know what's good for you, you will not ask me about technology. <laughs> That's not my thing. <laughs> but if you have a specific question, perhaps somebody in the group can answer the question about sound. Anything else? Did we have any questions, other questions in the chat that I didn't address? No, they are in the chat. Okay. Are you try, trying also to prepare a short sentence as a result? What do you mean by that, Armand? Do you hey, mean? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. I better. can. No, I was thinking uh, to, to, to have a better message, a uh, better effect of the message. Is it better to try to be concise in terms of uh, the length of the sentence you try to, um, in that case, uh, use instead of going into very long sentences where you're kind of with a stress missing uh, kind of where you are in the middle of it? I don't know if you see what I mean. Uh, try, I to focus, so. try to focus on be uh, very short, straight to the point instead of uh, trying to be too elaborate maybe. Well, you know, I think this is a, a cultural discussion because in the United States, we value time more than anything else. So we like to get to the point and uh, do things, get to the meat of the message very quickly and move on. And I know that the French like to make you wait for it <laughs> until the end. And they like to discuss and, uh, before they ever talk about what they're talking about. Um, so. I think it all depends on who you're meeting with. Yeah, okay. Be prepared to be concise, especially if we want to respect time and respect other people's time. But you can always be, uh, ask people if you want to elaborate. So I would say show up and have a short, distinct, concise message, and then be willing to talk about it if other people want you to elaborate. That's the way I think about it. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah, thank you. Kara, it's Adeline. Um, do you have any specific uh, tips for French on words that are hard to pronounce? Like if you go back onto the uh, 
um, MLK speech, we some words like wallow or um, we hold these truths. That's really hard to say for a French person. What it would is. be your tip for, yeah, what would be your tip for, for, for us? Well, for, for the phrase, we hold these truths, uh, first of all, you don't have the H. So we would have to work on, I would work on the H sound and you simply work on H by fogging up a window, creating breath into your hand and then transitioning into the vowel. The THs are also a challenge at the end. And the way you make THs is by putting your tongue up against your top teeth. Perhaps you already know this, but the point is not to put pressure against the, the tongue and the teeth, but to let it rest there and let the air move through. So those two words really are challenging, but I kind of have to take a look at what the person is doing to know where they're holding tension in order to know where to release it. If that makes sense. I'm not sure if that really answered your question, but that's the best I can do without really seeing what you do. But what you said was just fine. I could completely <laughs> understand what you were saying. Even though it might feel awkward to you, when we always go back to the breath, the breath will carry the sound. But we get so caught up in the mechanics and the muscling of sounds that that, and it's the trying too hard that winds up being in the way. If that helps. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Kara, for an insightful uh, presentation. We were delighted to have you uh, today. We hope to see you soon uh, in person. It's my pleasure. And um, so Fakini has, uh, um, has a few webinars uh, lined up uh, in the uh, upcoming uh, week. So we have one webinar per week until uh, June 3rd. So I invite you to uh, visit uh, our website, faccne.org, uh, to see the, the program. Uh, the various, uh, the topics are extremely, uh, extremely various and uh, valuable. And uh, this uh, webinar program is made possible thanks to the support of uh, FACNI's uh, sponsors and Elite and Platinum members. I hope you uh, enjoyed the presentation and we look forward to um, meeting you soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. 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 Thank you. <laughs>